I'm glad Ron has suggested that we take a few moments here on the day before our drive-in worship service at Church of the Cross and just put something here, record something, a message that maybe is a bit of a summary of some of the key messages for our worship tomorrow. So in just five or six minutes or so, I'm going to share that tomorrow, <laughs> If you're not able to be here, I want to give a, a strong welcome to folks. Welcome to folks who gather in a time that is just unbelievably unique. Very, very mindful are we that in this 2020, which isn't even halfway over, we've experienced some things in this year. Really, when you go back, to the impeachment hearings that we were watching in the early part of the year. That seems so far back. But then we had this pandemic arriving on the scene, the coronavirus onslaught and the accompanying um, quarantine of, of all of us then the economics of our land and the whole world actually um, the unemployment that affected just almost all of us all of our extended families and acquaintances and communities and now in rapid fire succession the no-knock raid and death of Breonna Taylor the hunting and killing of Ahmad Arbery and the execution of George Floyd and then the rioting and the looting of America's urban centers. We've revisited just in these short months, a span collapsed into a third of a year, some of the most traumatic experiences of the past century the Spanish flu in 1918, the economic crash in 1929, race-related killings and urban unrest in 1968, the impeachment in 1974. And throughout all of these things, our hearts were just burdened by what was presiding in our world around us. And that's the kind of world that we're in today. So as we gather together, I want us to be mindful that we gather in the midst of the heaviness, the despair, and the death, and the trouble that has arisen out of impatience. But also alongside of that is to proclaim that our trust is in the Lord, and that we choose to be people that are grateful and thankful and give praise to God for our help is also in the name of the Lord so we won't be afraid in our worship tomorrow to talk a little bit about what it means to have righteous anger that anger is sometimes a response that is faithful but how stemming from that righteous action is sometimes so elusive much more frequently we see unrighteous actions and so it takes so much patience to listen to the anger and to hear this moment and also to help people be guided towards righteousness but in the midst of all of that that emotion to remember the message of Jesus and I want to read tomorrow from Philippians chapter 2 the lines in there where Paul says very, very clearly that Jesus, the powerful one, equal with God, he chose not to cling to his power. And when we think of that word power, we could think of he, he, he chose to set aside his standing of being equal with God. He, he chose to not grab a hold of and claim and fight for his rights, his status, but he emptied himself and became flesh, became a human being and walked on this earth. And so, although the 
words of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus are precious. It's those actions of Jesus that inspire me so much in this moment in our history. So we'll talk a little bit about what it might be like for our community to be willing to do that kind of self-emptying and what happens in a positive sense when we're empty of ourselves and not so full of our confidence and having our, mm, our assessment of the world at our fingertips, but instead need so desperately to listen. We'll share some stories about people who've been good listeners, stories about folks who've heard new, new accounts, new incidences of how African Americans have for decades and decades um, learned to survive in a, a world where their race is oftentimes a disadvantage in the small ways, insignificant ways, like going out and jogging. Or one woman said, when you're an African American, you think very carefully about walking out of a store without having purchased something. Or a basketball coach who said, I put four chairs up and I run through a skid. I put my basketball players in these four chairs, front seat, passenger seat, back seat, and the other side of the back seat, and you are stopped by the police and we're gonna role play this. I had never thought of that. So these kinds of stories that come when we listen. So I hope we'll have a chance to get a word of God that reminds us of Christ in his love, in his self-emptying love, who's coming to earth, opened up the way for grace and God's spirit to flow and blessings to create new community such as we see in the book of Acts again and again and again. And if there's anyone that asks you the question, is this all worth it? We say, yes, it's absolutely worth it to pause, to do this, which is challenging, and to be inspired and shown the way by God's Spirit. I hope you come with us tomorrow, but I'm glad you're able to see this message online.